Very few long prayers in the Bible. They're short talks. I heard one preacher make light of that song, said just a little talk with Jesus, said like there was something wrong with that. And they, they mock that song, one great leader. I heard him say it several times. It really ticked me off. Because it's some little talks that make a difference. Amen. Little talks make a large difference. You'll find the text in 1 Kings tonight. Chapter number 17. Tonight's the last night to sign up for the teen banquet. And uh, I would encourage you parents just to go on and let you. It'd be, it, it's good culturally. It's a good cultural activity. We don't have to go to the world to learn culture. Y'all listening to me, be good culturally for your children to go to this banquet and dress up and have candles on the table and, and act, you know, like a gentleman and act like a lady. Amen. Well, we're just trying to pastor and everybody's bowing up on me. So I, I might make them get in the choir and make them go to the banquet. It's a church function. It's a church function. Make them go. Amen. All right. It's funny, you make them do all these worldly things. And when I say worldly, I'm not just saying, I'm not saying they're bad things, but world, act, world activities. Make them go to stuff that has nothing to do with God. And then we, we offer a banquet where you come dressed nice and you, you know, do like you you know, do like you're supposed to do. Act like a gentleman, act like a lady. And then they boycott that. Don't boycott that. Send your young uns to the thing. That's what Joel said to say right there. And he said, Tell them to leave the cigarettes at home. All right. Operation Saturations is Saturday. Can y'all believe another month has come around just like that? And uh, all you deacons ought to come get a good breakfast and time of fellowship and be a part of the teachers meeting, hear what's going on. And all of our uh, Timothy club ought to be there, all the bus captains, every teacher ought to be there. The bus Christmas party for the bus workers, bus drivers, those that work on the bus routes, there'll be a sign-up sheet in the foyer. And the children's uh, church workers are also encouraged to come. If you work in any of the children's churches, that's part of the bus ministry. And we want you to be a part of that. There'll be a sign-up sheet in the back along with the sign-up for the banquet. All right, greetings from Alabama. I just came back from the top of the river, Brother Borden. He's not back in here yet. He had suggested me eating at a place called the Top of the River down in Gadsden, Alabama, I guess. And I mean, man, that was catfish and shrimp. Can I get a witness right there? Hush puppies about that big around. It, it helped me. You ever heard of the Top of the River? Man, it, is it good, Brian, or not? If you ever down that way, I know you don't want to stay down there, but if you're just passing through, just pull in there and get a good bite. And then Brother Adam's daddy said to tell y'all, hey, he said, he's going to get up here pretty soon, Brother Borden. And he was there for the preaching. And then uh, I saw, some of you will remember, um, what was your neighbor's names? Derek and Angela. Uh, Derek was our treasurer at one time. The Cochran's. How many remember the Cochran's? Uh, raise your hand if you remember them. Y'all remember Derek? And they had two, that, that time they had two children. And now they've got a third little girl about two years old. And uh, beautiful children, they're doing well. And they've joined this church I was preaching at, old-fashioned church. And uh, that's, Brother Randy, you had an influence in their life. They came here, and neighbors of Brother Randy and Miss Chris, they invited them to our church, and they got indoctrinated with fundamental Christianity. Amen. And I mean, now they, they went for years looking for a church, and they finally found this, this old-fashioned young boy from East Tennessee who's pastoring a church. He's got God on him. And... Uh, the old time guy, he's from Kingsport area, and uh, he's, he's a mountain style preacher, and they wanted that. Man, they said to tell everybody, hey, so greetings from Alabama. And I'm glad to be back home from Alabama. Praise God. Man, Chattanooga sounds good to me. Somebody say amen. Just being in Tennessee, isn't it good to cross the Tennessee border? And then when you get in the state, it's wonderful. And all God's people said. But then when you cross over into Rutherford County coming home, there ain't nothing like it. 
It sends cold chills up and down my spine. I'm telling you, it ministers to me. Praise God for Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee's got everything. If you go east around, you'll find mountains. And I'm, there's some good ones. You get about to Cannon County, you got some steeps. And, uh, and around Fosterville and southern Rutherford County, there's mountains and hills. And then you got good farmland, fertile land, the central part of this county. And you got every kind of restaurant in this county. All kind of deer to kill. I talked to Fred up at CNF Meats today. He said in three counties surrounding, they, he's already uh, skint and, and processed over 700 deer. Big old monster rags. Praise God, that's good, isn't it? Glory to God. I mean, man, you could live somewhere else. You live here. Praise God for it. I don't want to live anywhere that you can't get to a Demas restaurant in 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> I'd be deprived if I lived somewhere where you couldn't get to Demas's. I mean, I don't get to eat them all the time, Brother Eddie, but that, that Kansas City. Whew, praise God. It cost a lot of money, but that Kansas City, medium well with a baked potato or spaghetti with meat sauce as your side. That will make a bulldog break his chain. It's good. And all God's people see it. I'm just trying to cultivate an atmosphere of excitement tonight. Uh, say, who said what? Sister? Yeah. Oh, man. Kim, you picked up on that baked potato, didn't you? Well, isn't it good to have Kim here tonight? Oh, Kim. What a, Kim been coming to our church a long, long time. Kim, when did you start coming to our church? That's what I said. <laughs> Kim started coming. Y'all listen. Kim, Kim started coming back when I was a little boy. That's right. <laughs> Praise God. She's still coming. Kim, we thank God for Kim. And look at what a pair. Kim and Mary Kay running around together <laughs> all the time. That's back near dangerous. Well, praise God. Let's get to the Bible now. 1 Kings chapter number 17. This is reel our minds in, man. <clears throat> I want to say it's a privilege to pastor the Middle Tennessee Baptist Church, and I'm thankful for this opportunity. And I love you people, and my family loves you people. And uh, uh, it's a, such a great blessing to be able to minister and to, to have a platform, not only to preach and to pastor, but to have an international ministry all the way to Anchorage, Alaska. They know about us, isn't that something? Amazing. It wouldn't be that way if it wasn't for a church like this. I wouldn't get to travel. The doors would not have opened had it not been for this place and you people. And I, I realize it and I'm thankful for it. And I praise the Lord for it. And tonight I want to try to help you out of 1 Kings chapter 17. We recall uh, as we concluded last Sunday night uh, the miracles and ministry of Elijah and Elisha. We concluded that in these first five verses, we find here a ministry of dependence on God, proving God's alive to yourself, a place of self-preparation. And let me remind you just to lay a little pavement before we get into the highway of the new study tonight, that we must depend on God. Amen. Uh, we must depend on God. Ministries and churches and lives that have an impact on others are lives that are dependent on God. Now, can you understand that? I'm talking about we have to have him. There has to be a, a, a faith in him. This is the word of God. For without faith, it's impossible to please him. If we operate by sight, if this church operates by sight, we can't please God. I, I, I mean, a ministry, a local New Testament church, a parachurch organization, any kind of uh, evangelistic outreach that does not rely on God for daily bread is not in compliance with the Bible. Amen. Money's not given to hoard. Money's not given to draw interest. Offerings are taken to spend to the, to the wisest expenditure to reach the most people with the gospel. Amen. Sometimes that's the salary of a staff. Amen. Sometimes that's fuel in a bus. Sometimes that's insurance that covers property. But it's used, it's given not to invest, but it's given to use right then. It's not to set up and draw interest. Our interest is drawn on the other side. 
And I say that to say that our ministry has to be a dependent ministry. When we get relying on a savings account, we're in a mess. When a work begins to rely on assets accumulated and money over here invested in this work. I know a great preacher, great man of God. They had over $3 million they'd been saving. This one particular account. And uh, he invested it. God's money now. Invested three million. God's people's money they'd given. And, and with the approval of the deacons, they invested this money to try to make more money on this money. Now look at me. Lost all three million. About right then, they would have voted me out. He's still pastoring the church. One of a kind. But went bellies up. Joker was a crook. Y'all had them, had them all hoodwinked. One of them Christian crooks. Amen. <clears throat> Took them for all, three million. Member of the church, lied to them like a dog. I ain't making it, brought him, I'm making this up. I'm not making this up. If I said his name, everybody would know him and y'all like him. And I love him. But I'm telling you, we don't need three million in the bank. We need to depend on God in the morning. And when Sunday's over and he finishes writing checks, we need to start praying Monday for more money. A dependence. That's the way God said. It's, it's, it's impossible to please God. The disciples couldn't even pay their taxes. <laughs> Whoa, I know what they felt like. Hallelujah. And he said, run down there and catch a fish and open the mouth. And there'll be money in his mouth. They were dependent on God to meet their need. And hallelujah, when you put your faith and you put your trust in him, you can count on it, good neighbor. He'll always show up every single time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He has done it. He is doing it, and he will do it. You'll never have a blessed ministry until you have a dependent ministry. That's what he was doing by a brook, waiting on crows, waiting on ravens, waiting on a trickle of water to come out of a spring. What is he doing? He's waiting on God. He's dependent on God. If God did, he, he didn't send a week's worth. And he didn't tell them wandering in the wilderness for 40 years to gather to a day's worth. That's right. He said, just gather enough for today. If you get too much because you won't trust me for tomorrow, I'll put worms in you, manna. Yeah. This is so biblical. Bless God, you got to like it. Yeah. Amen. This is so in line with God's word. I feel like preaching a little while. Yeah. Hey, you got to like this. Give us this day our daily bread. He wants us to need him tomorrow. And a work of God that's blessed. And a worker of God that's blessed. Is a worker, is a work, is a church that is dependent on the God of the Bible. That's how he likes it. That's how he blesses. That's how he uses And there's not an exception to the rule. Not an exception to the rule in the Bible. Dependence, a ministry of dependence. As we analyze this ministry of Elijah, we see a second episode. It starts in verse number eight. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, Behold, the widow woman was gathering uh, sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. By the way, could I just say, Verse 12, and I may not preach on this, but it sure jumped out at me. That was the big L and the big G. She knew who she was talking about. God knew there was a widow woman down there that needed some help, and she was a God-fearing woman. 
She didn't say little L and little G. It was that she knew the God she identified. And she said, but I got a handful of meal in a barrel, a handful of meal in a barrel. You can't make one pancake with a handful of meal. And I'm gathering two sticks. You can't make much of a fire with two sticks. That I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said. By the way, go and do is just like he said he went and did. You're going to find that consistently through these miracles and ministry of Elijah. You're going to see that over and over. Go and do, went and did, went and did. Go and do, went and did. She, he, said, he said, go and do. But make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the crews of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the crews of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Our Heavenly Father, I need your touch tonight. Put the light of the Holy Ghost on these words. Illumine this revelation given so many years ago. And make it, uh, make it easy for us to understand. Lord, if it's a review for some, I pray it'll be a fresh review. And a reinforcement of what we believe and practice. Let us leave here strengthen people, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, we established number one, the first step to a successful ministry. Uh, a godly ministry, a godly life, a godly minister, a godly work is surrounded with dependence. We got that. Number one is what? Dependence. But I believe there's a second element in these lives and miracles and ministry of Elijah that we see. Jot this down. It's, a, it's an element of deliverance. Write that word down, deliverance. Something big needs to happen in every ministry. Big things need to happen. Amen. You go to following the miracles of Elijah and Elijah. It was big things happening. Barrels of meal waste not and oil fails not. Dead boys get up from the dead. Fire falls down from heaven. Elisha picks up the mantle, smokes the ground, smokes the water, walks over on dry ground on the Jordan, across Jordan, goes over and he raises two dead people up in his ministry. One when he was alive and one after he's in a grave. Y'all listening? I mean, I'm telling you big things. I wouldn't give you five cents for a ministry. Number one, it's scared of the word healing. I wouldn't give you five cents for somebody's Baptist crowd that's so hyper dispensational they don't even think God can heal in the New Testament. And I'm against faith healers. I'm against circus sideshow, bunch of blowing on people and a bunch of television silliness, phoniness. But I believe in deliverance. Big things need to happen. You understand I'm talking about this, this, this life, two of God's people, a, a son and a mother, a widowed mother. Her life was hanging in the balances and it was hinged upon the obedience of Elijah the prophet. If he had not left when he left, we're making one cake. He got there right on time. His dried brook became a divine blessing for a widowed woman and her son. Are y'all listening to this? I mean, praise God, friend. That right there is deliverance. She needed something real bad. He showed up right at the right, I'm talking about the right place at the right time with the right words. That's deliverance. Any way you look at it, hey, you ask her what happened, she'd say, I got delivered. Deliverance comes in many facets and fashions. I believe dope addicts need to get delivered. And they don't need a bunch of counseling to get it done. If, if a dope addict cannot get sober at that blue bench right there, I'm quitting. 
If a drunkard can't get sober at that mourner's bench right there, look up in here. I quit. I can't stand that talk. Hi, I'm so and so and I'm an alcoholic. Not if God saved you and sobered you. You used to be an alcoholic. You ain't an alcoholic. You was one. You ain't no more. Amen. Amen. You got to be on your toes and fight the flesh, but God can deliver you. I'm talking about the hand of God. Deliverance is, is, is typified through the scripture in healing. I would quit the diet, I promise you, I, I'd quit and go to making an honest income if I did not think that God could heal cancer, if God could, if God could, could make fruitful a barren womb. I, we've anointed women with oil that the doctor said couldn't have babies. They're here tonight with their babies. If I didn't believe in deliverance, hey, you ain't got much ministry. Ain't much ministry without deliverance. Amen, praise God. I'm telling you, he's able to deliver and you give me a powerless ministry that can't believe him. I'm, oh, I'm telling you, I don't know much about these other denominations, but I know a bunch of Baptist churches scared of that word deliverance. They think it's a charismatic word. They think it's some kind of holiness word. But I'm telling you, it's a Bible. It's a Bible practice. It's a God thing. He can deliver you from the place. I'm talking about he can deliver a mind from a craving for pornography. He can deliver you from financial failures. He can raise you back up. He can deliver you. He can pull you out. He's in the business of changing situations. He's in the business of turning things around. This God of the Bible, he wants to be around. Ministries where deliverance takes place. God is in the delivering business. And the miracles in ministry of Elijah were miracles in ministry that surrounded deliverance. Big things happened. Man, I, I'm telling you, I don't want to be a part of a church that can settle for just, you know, well, we went to church, had a good service and everything. Did anybody get saved? Well, no. I, I don't want to be, I, I can't get comfortable with that. I want a place where people get saved every Sunday. Amen. That don't happen here all the time, but I want to be around that kind of place where we're expecting deliverance. I'm expecting somebody to get saved around this property on Sunday. I, we keep the baptistry full of water. Y'all listen to me. We had one little spell where the water pump got messed up. But look up in here. She's running down doing fine. There's no Christmas trees. Look up in here. There's no reefs for the rest of the year. Hey, it's not dusty in there. There's no spider webs. Look up in here. Hey, we keep water there because we're expecting to dunk somebody. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, anytime. It's a good time to get delivered. Amen. I keep oil under this pulpit. It ain't to grease it either. It's in compliance with the New Testament. If there's any sick among you, let them call the elders of the church. And let them anoint them with oil. And the, the prayer, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. Hey, I believe that God can deliver. He can, he can deliver messed up livers. You can be in the ICU waiting room. You can be in intensive care with hoses and, uh, uh, and, and all kind of uh, IVs going into your body. And, and God can show up in the middle of that and turn that around. I, I, I want to be a part of that kind of ministry. Hey man, for that kind of ministry. Hey man, for that kind of ministry. I'm talking about a ministry of deliverance. Take an old harlot and make her a, a godly housewife. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about a situation that was desperate. And God's man came on the scene. Now I want you to notice several things about this, this, this deliverance. This deliverance was was a deliverance that was spawned by the word of God. 
Verse 8, and the word of the Lord came unto him. The word of the Lord came unto him. That's where it all starts. That's where deliverance starts. And I love music, but it didn't start with a quartet and a concert. He didn't say, and they had a gospel singing. And anybody that likes it, I like it. We got the primitives coming. Praise God. Where and when they come in less in February? Praise God. We're gonna have we're gonna sucker punch them again. Gonna have they all we're gonna announce it and we're gonna have preaching first. Amen. It's gonna be good. Amen. But he didn't say that they had a singing. He didn't say they had a higher education. They didn't open a Bible college and then all of a sudden. And, and I like it high, but it wasn't an emotional experience. Didn't say anybody jumped high and talked in tongues, saw a vision, saw an angel at the foot of their bed. He didn't see an angel at the foot of his bed. He didn't talk in an unknown tongue. He didn't drink Drano. He didn't burn himself with a cigarette lighter. He didn't pick up no copperhead. God help. Woo, I show hope to God you ain't got to do that to prove anything. God, I don't even like large earthworms. Say amen. I can fish with crickets. Say amen. You know what got everything started? The word of the Lord. Praise God. Hey, we got plenty of that around here. We might not have anybody walking on fire around here. Y'all listen, been a long time since I've seen anybody, hey, raised from the dead around here, honestly. But where the word of God starts getting preached, regeneration starts taking place, refreshment starts coming, renewal starts coming. I'm telling you, revival starts coming. Now, when old Ezekiel preached down yonder in the valley of dead man's bones, he prophesied, that means he preached, bless God, to them dead man's bones, and life came back on them, and sinew and flesh came back on them, and breath came back in their lungs, and they got out from the graveyard when the word of God was preached. I'm telling you, it'll still deliver. It'll still deliver. The miracles and ministry of Elijah seem to, to, to put the, the light and they, they, they raise up and they exalt this truth that we need more of. Deliverance, the real thing is what I'm talking about. I hear about a bunch of that deliverance. Baptized 10,000 last year and I go preach at their Sunday night service or on a Monday night and they got 150 in the building. Something wrong with that. Something bad wrong. I think we might have baptized 160 something last two years. That's pitiful. We need to be baptizing more. But a lot of them's here. They're not all AWOL. You get delivered, you'll want to come to church. Amen. I don't put a, any stock at all in those big numbers. And they don't impress me. It don't impress me a bit. That don't make, I don't, I don't, I'm abused when you go talking them numbers, I go to yeah on you. And I'm for numbers. But I want it real, I want deliverance. I want it to be real. That hurt the word of God spawned this deliverance. When I think about deliverance, I don't see a word, but I see a widow. What did he use to deliver? What in the world? I mean, man, he, he didn't say now, now Elijah, go down yonder to that car dealer's home who's uh, he's an online investor a CPA accountant a, a tax lawyer <laughs> and go see what that multi-millionaire can do for you Then if he had got delivered, it would have been that multi-millionaire's bank account. He didn't say, go see George Bush. And pull some strings while you're at the White House. 
Try to get some stuff swung for us. Tell him about us, you know. And when they start that faith-based help, you know, those faith-based organizations that they're going to like match the funds, tell him about us. We're faith-based. Then when the check came, it'd be power of man that brought the deliverance. Oh, I feel like preaching so bad. Oh, but he said, go down there to a pitiful widow's house. And she's so poor that she ain't got but a handful of meal. She don't even have enough to make two cakes. And go down there and you're going to be amazed how deliverance can be provided. I I look at it if I was on her side. It wasn't no social security worker. It wasn't no welfare worker. That came knocked on her door with a hoop of cheese and bless God some welfare peanut butter. Because if she had got delivered she would have been hooked up like the rest of America. Sucking the government. For another check, for another handout. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. But it was an old timey. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Y'all don't mind if I did something good. Yeah. 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 It was an old timey preacher that came on the scene and said, Widow woman, go get me a drink of water. Widow woman, make me a cake first. And praise God in an unlikely circumstance, unlikely on both ends of the spectrum. God met him in the middle and said, I'm going to help both of y'all at the same time. How praise God. I'm able to deliver. I'm still in the delivering business. I can help y'all. Hey, you just listen to me. And God delivered. Oh, hallelujah to God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I need some deliverance. I want to be around where that kind of business is going on. I I want to be around where that kind of God is uh, incredibly involved. And and I'm talking about detailed. I'm right on time at the right place at the right person's house. I might near say there's more than one widow in Zarephath. You know when he came in town, he's looking for the right one. You know it had been more husbands die than hers in any town. But he kept following God, Brother Joel. Praise you. Y'all don't worry about me. I'm having a good time. Woo! He walked until God said, right there's the one picking up him sticks. He, he, he had no doubt he's at the right place right, right. at the right time with the right people. Right. You know what all that, you know what that, you get at the right place at the right time with the right people. And I'm telling you, deliverance is fixing to be born out of that situation. So big man can't claim anything on it. Man can't put his old prideful hands on it. Man can't put his claim on it. But the God of the Bible gets all the glory. He gets all the praise. Hey, thank God for deliverance. That's what kind of ministry. Oh, hallelujah. That's what kind of ministry. That's what kind of church. That's what kind of preacher. That's what kind of people I want to be hooked up with. Hey, praise his holy name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. There's a widow woman. Widow woman. I think about the widow. 
I think about the word, but I think about the wonder. It's one of them kind of deals where it wasn't easily forgotten. That's where deliverance comes in. See, all that stuff, that television stuff, one week it's knocking them down, you know, heal. And the next week it's, and the next week it's a laughing. They get the spirit of laughter. And the next week they get, they get the demons of overweight cast out of them. And it's always another fad. It's always something else. Reverend Ike, you got to get a ring on every finger in the car. It's always something. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? How many is with me tonight? But this was a, this was a unique one. Because when deliverance comes, it hangs around. Let me help you. Now, I know that there's such things as backsliding, and I'm not arguing that. But if a man's saved, and God sobers him like he did Bo, it's lasted. Now, I'm not going to say Bo, I wouldn't want to claim prideful, but if old Bo ever had a relapse, it won't be a long one, number one, or he'll be in an early grave if he's saved. So a lot of these people tells me I got saved, got off drugs, and then they're back on them again and all that stuff. Number one, I don't even believe they ever was saved. That's what I, I don't believe it for two, two seconds. You can believe it all you want to. Come tell me all your verses, and I'll give you all mine, like new creature. I'll give you mine, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That's still in there, ain't it? Ain't, ain't it, champ, new creature? She's still in there. I'll give them, when they come up with all their reasons to sin and all, I'll just say new creature. What about that? Old things passed away. Now, how you deal with that? You ain't going to stay long back in that hog lot. If you ever, you're going to get cleaned up. You may fall, but you're going to get cleaned up real quick. You're not going to wall waller out there a long time. And there's not a biblical example to prove. Hey, that, that, that young, that, 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 par, that, that rich young, that, not that rich young ruler, but that prodigal son, he didn't stay long. He was still young when he got back. That's the point I made. Now, watch it. Wait a minute. What I'm talking about, It lasted. There's a wonder involved in deliverance. I mean, it lasts. It wasn't baked two cakes out of that one handful and they just got the two cakes and then the one for the preacher. But the next day, she went back to that same barrel. She didn't go, oh, <laughs> she didn't go to some other barrel. She went back to the, to the same barrel and went back, praise his holy name. She went back, glory to God, to the same cruise of oil and dipped again and made probably some for breakfast. I don't know Middle Eastern culture, but if it's like us, they had to have lunch and supper. Somebody say Amen. She made two more to evening. Yeah. The boy might have been rabbit hunting that day. You don't ever know what God could do. Amen. 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 Yeah. He could have come back with two gray squirrels and a, and a rabbit yeah. that evening. Y'all listen what God can do. And had oil. And it said that the barrel <laughs> wasted not. I mean, it didn't even go down any. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe that barrel was ever running over. In my mind's eye, now you can say, well, don't say it, but in my mind's eye, I just believe, oh, praise God. I just believe she had a handful every day. And she went back in there, and I bet she's going, that second day, let's see what happens. I bet she didn't even look in. She just reached down there. And she reached way down there and she scooped up and got one and said, well, look here. Got that grease hot. And, and said, let's see what we got, boy. And reached back in there and got another. One. And I'm going to tell you, as long as she needed them, she could reach in there and get them. That's deliverance. Yeah. If it's running out on you, you ain't got much. All this new stuff they putting out, it's done run out on them. 
It doesn't run out on them. They can't stay sober. They can't stay with their wives. They can't say, hey, it's done run out on their children. They're all hippies and all out trying to, hey, but I'm telling you, we've been dipping in that same old barrel. Praise God. We've been pouring with that same old Holy Ghost oil, that same old meal, which is a type of the word of God. It's bread. And we've been staying with the bread. We've been staying with the Holy Ghost. And it's still been working. And I'm telling you, it's holding on pretty good. There's a wonder. There's a wonder in this great deliverance that we find in this passage. There's a wonder. I I want to be around that kind of ministry. To where it don't run out. It's there again next. Hey, I'm telling you, you just keep on digging in the barrel. He'll keep on providing a meal. There's a wonder. What a great, what a great story. What great application in these last days. In a time which we're living. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a time where there's a whole lot of this, this uh, uh, short-lived religion. I'm telling you right now, Islam, by the way, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Y'all know me again that. But that stuff's new. That ain't old. It's changed so much since its, since its origin. But this book we got, buddy, she's never wasted. It's never failed. And there's as much in here now as it ever was. A miracle in ministry of Elijah. I believe all the good works of God, all the good workers of God will be dependent people. It's a work of dependence. I believe a godly work is a work of deliverance. I wonder tonight, and you see the text, we've already read it, but I just want to read it again because I kind of get full when I read it. (sighs) And she went and did, verse 15, according to the saying of Elijah, It wasn't Elijah saying. It was God saying. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Man, you need to be under preaching. You don't don't need to to ever minimize the importance of what's going on right this second. This is what turns it all around. You don't ever need to minimize your children like Sunday night ain't important, Wednesday night ain't important. It's all, hey, when the Word of God's being preached, man, I'm telling you, it is a priority. And that's where deliverance 